Uh, I'm being asked to introduce the team and the company. I think I start. Uh, so uh, we've got a team of five uh, scholars here who have been working with uh, five ISC uh, uh, people here. We've been working with CEL for a year now. Uh, we have Alec, uh, Brennan, uh, Jamie, Rinalni, and Sachi. So these people uh, have been working on the project related to use of solar energy in the country. And uh, just to give you a brief background of the company, which is what I was told to do in the, to begin with, CEL is a company which is established in 1974 uh, as a PSU under the Ministry of Science and Technology, set up with the objective of bringing technologies developed by the National Laboratory to the market. The company has had a fairly illustrious past. It was the first, it introduced India's first indigenously designed color TV way back in the 1980s. It was the first company in the field of solar photovoltaics in the country. In fact, it uh, manufactured India's first solar photovoltaic cell. It manufactured India's first solar panel, first solar plant, and has been working in the area of solar photovoltaics in a number of uh, over 30 countries across the world. Uh, it was also uh, Dr. APJ Kalam was associated to this company for nine years. He was a director on the board of Central Electronics Limited. Uh, there have been a number of other illustrious persons on this company. Today it works in four major business areas, uh, solar photovoltaics, railway signaling and uh, uh, safety systems, and uh, this uh, defense electronic components, as well as uh, uh, integrated security and surveillance systems. As you would imagine, all these four are you know, high growth, uh, sunrise industries, and one would imagine any company in that area would be doing brilliantly. Unfortunately, that was not the case with CEL, and the company has not been doing very well in the recent past. Uh, in fact, just to give you a basic sort of a picture of what of the, where the company has been, we, with a paid up capital of 60 crores, we were at a net worth of six crores two years ago. Today we are at a net worth of 22 crores. We have uh, average age of 52 years, average salary 70,000 rupees per month, S low morale, you know, low productivity, high costs. This is the, the challenge that the company has been facing. And this was the challenge in which this team I'm just giving a little bit of the background as to how this team came in and what uh, sort of thing they've, they've been working with. So, uh, and it's, we have learned together to be, to be very, very fair to everyone. So, uh, we started off with discussions way back in April last year with Sanjay, March, April last year with Sanjay, where we decided that, you know, in terms of areas to work, what are the, what are the key areas we can start working with. We identified solar as one major opportunity, and we identified uh, security systems as the other one we said the team could work on too. Then over a period of time, we realized that solar itself offered huge opportunities. So, and also it was in terms of the social context, it has much more to, to you know, just from purely commercial or business context, more the social context was more important. So I think as the team joined, we started uh, saying that, okay, instead of splitting into two, we work in the area of solar. And uh, initially, we were looking at focusing on rural development. Integrated rural development was the first uh, area that the team took up. You know, we, we said, let's look at how we can, uh, given, given the fact that CSR was, a, was, a, was mandated under the Companies Act, and, every, and there was almost 10,000 crores of public, of, uh, funds, CSR funds estimated to be available. We said integrated rural development would be an area to work in. But then we, we found that uh, things were not so, we, we in fact, uh, first two, three months were spent on that where uh, uh, we were working on partnerships for integrated rural development and at the same time trying to canvas for uh, companies which would take up projects on that. Uh, but at that point we realized that, you know, integrated rural development the credibility would be low because there was no experience in that area. Plus, the, the Swachh Bharat and the toilets scheme had come along and public sector funds were more diverted into toilets. So that was the stage where the second pivot happened. 
And then we were looking from integrated development, we looked at energy enabled development, as well as the, uh, this which was the rural, where, where solar plays a huge role. And in addition to that, for the urban areas, we were looking at smart cities because DMICDC also had, uh, was, was working on that. So the second team in DMIDC was working on smart cities. So that was the area which was taken up. And thereafter, the, th the team has gone into two, these two tracks. So I think I'll leave it now to the team to tell you all what they've been doing. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Today, Alek and I will be presenting the rationale and context for the work that we were doing on rural energy access and urban sustainability. I'll then walk you through what our work looked like as part of rural energy access. And then I'll turn it over to Alek, who'll talk about the city's initiative and the work we did under urban sustainability. And then he'll talk about some of the challenges that we confronted this year, working within the public sector and working within our two industries, and what we've learned that we hope might be applicable to the industry and to other people who find themselves in a similar context. So an introduction to our project. Uh, Dr. Nellen has already walked you through the context of CEL, how it started, and the areas that it worked on. Uh, the case that was really made for rural energy access and urban sustainability is that CEL had prior experience in rural electrification, and that with the opportunity within the urban sector, this was an area that they wanted to grow in. The mandate that was set to the IAC team was threefold. The first was sustained profitability, the second was new business opportunities, and the third was social impact. Under sustained profitability, it was really to revive CEL and take it onto a financial path that it was self-sustaining, that was profitable. In new business opportunities, it was looking at what new work CEL could do within its rural electrification vertical and what new opportunities there were within the urban renewable energy sector. And the other mandate that was given to us was to really prioritize our projects, looking at projects that had positive impact on the end user and that had broader social, societal impact. And we focused exclu exclusively on distributed solar, since this is where CL's expertise lie. And briefly, distributed solar is um, energy is produced where it's consumed um, in brief. The context for our project really was framed by the demographic transition and trajectory that India is going through. And if you look at where India will be in 2050, there's certainly the story that we've heard. We've heard it earlier when we were listening to DMIC project about how contemporary India will be framed by the process of urbanization. And so in the next 35 years, urban India will be twice the size that it currently is. But that's not to say that rural India will diminish. In fact, rural India will be as massive as it is at present, which means that the infrastructural challenges that India will face will be faced both in urban India as well as rural India. And especially when it comes to energy access, this remains a, a crucial development challenge for the country on the whole. Coming to the energy requirements of rural India, if you look at the 33% of off-grid households, we see that 94% of them fall within rural areas. And the rural energy-starved household is characterized by high dependence on traditional fuels, on kerosene, in areas where there's poor national grid reach and oftentimes a very erratic, unreliable grid. And the off-grid market as a whole sees low penetration and Within, by 2018, it's estimated that sales in the off-grid sector will increase by almost 365 million US dollars. So we felt that this had a strong business case for CEL to expand its work in the off-grid sector and also was a clear societal need that we could uh, respond to. Coming to the case for urban India, if you look at the needs of urban India by 2015, you see that they're large requirements in terms of urban infrastructure equivalent to almost 1.5 United States. Additionally, there will be resource requirements when it comes to fresh water supply, solid waste um, disposal, energy that far exceed India's current capacity and that India can even meet given its current resource constraints. And CEL as a renewable energy company, there was a clear case for how it might get involved with uh, renewable energy solutions for urban India. When we spoke to industry experts, when we spoke to mentors, the advice that we were given is not to think about renewable energy as a siloed sort of single shot solution, but instead for us to think about renewable energy planning really within the framework of sustainability planning. And what that meant for the IIC team is that we adopted a deeply interdisciplinary approach. And this began first by asking the question of what are the goals and needs of a city user? What are the goals of an individual that might move through the city? Then looking at the urban systems that we needed to address, and then looking at the institutional factors that might support our in interventions. 
From this context, we developed and designed and spent our year on two new business areas. The first was energy-enabled development, where we attempted to bring affordable energy access to rural areas. And the second is the city's initiative, where we attempted to design synergistic urban solutions. Coming then to energy-enabled development. When we entered CEL, the challenges that we faced was one, an opportunity, which is that it had significant rural experience. But there was limited experience in products outside of solar home lighting systems, and there was no clear growth strategy outside of pursuing public sector enterprises for public funding to finance these projects. So the IAC team focused on five areas. The first was expanding CEL's product offering to solar mini-grids, which were high, higher along the energy value chain. The second was building effective partnerships, and especially with community organizations that worked on last mile delivery. The challenge that we saw is that the success and failure of most energy projects hinge on how effective implementation was on the ground. The third was giving the CEL team more rigorous and consistent experience with project management, really building the tools and processes such that CEL could carry forward uh, in the de delivery of these energy projects. The fourth was reaching out to funders to pitch these projects to secure them such that we were addressing one of our goals, which was sustained profitability and bringing in revenue for CEL. And then the final point was really focusing on designing a business strategy for how this off-grid vertical could grow from the short term to the long term. As part of this work, we traveled extensively. We traveled to UP, to Rajasthan and Bihar and tried to expose ourselves to the field reality in, in order to inform our work. Ultimately, we worked on two energy projects. The first was in Gaia, Bihar, which is what I'll talk about. And then the second was part of the Model Villages scheme, which was in Rajasthan and in Ghaziabad. As part of the Bihar mini grid project, we worked in two villages in Gaia, Bihar. We focused on two solar smart mini grids. This was CEL's first uh, foray into solar smart mini grids with an emphasis on smart meter technology that could record end user payment and consumption. We focused a lot of our efforts on designing a community architecture such that these interventions were owned and supported by the community. And specifically, we looked at a confederation of women's self-help groups um, that had previously had experience overseeing these type of interventions and that on the whole, uh, disaggregated risk and took on the financial responsibility for these projects. We also focused on effective water delivery. Uh, our interventions focused on three solar water pumping systems. Altogether, we reached 2,000 beneficiaries. And the hallmark of this project really were the community partnerships that we were able to broker. We worked with the Bihar Rural Livelihoods Promotion Society, which is a World Bank-funded project that's been working in Bihar for almost a decade now. And they have very strong uh, confederation of women's health help groups that have then been linked to the formal banking system. And we also worked with another community partner, Pran, on water irrigation solutions. Our second pilot came under the Sansad Adarsh Gram Yojana, which was a scheme that was released by the Ministry of Rural Development um, early on in our, IRS, in our IAC tenure in October of last year. What this scheme calls for is it requires each member of parliament to take on a model village within their constituency and to develop it as an example of how government schemes and government resources can be integrated in a harmonious manner and then delivered on the ground. We partnered with two members of parliament, Colonel Rajavender Singh Rator, who is the Minister of State for Information and Broadcasting, and General V.K. Singh, who is the Minister of State for Statistical Implementation and Programming. In both of these villages, we went through the process that we'd gone through previously, which was doing baseline assessments, demand assessments to look at what household and community needs were. We put forward three interventions. The first were rooftop solar for community buildings. The second was community street lights, and the third was uh, solar water pumps. In total, we reached 6,000 beneficiaries and have recruited funding um, that's in the pipeline of 70 lakhs for CEL. The third project that we focused this year has been designing a business plan for CEL's rural electrification vertical. And this has been structured into three different parts. First, an industry analysis to look at what the terrain and market potential is. Second was identification of CEL's niche given its unique strengths as a public sector enterprise. And then the third was an operational plan. So given what we've learned about market potential, how would we then operationalize this plan at CEL? What type of technical resources would they require? What type of partnerships would they require? require. And we're currently at the stage where we're completing our, our recommendation of where CEL should work and we're moving on to the operational plan. To give you a sense of some of the insights that we gained from our field visits, the first was that the solar lighting 
industry has a whole set of product offerings from solar lanterns to pico grids to mini grids, but we found that low capacity systems like solar lanterns or low capacity solar home systems really make a scratch when it comes to a household's energy use, is that they don't sufficiently displace kerosene or reliance on other traditional fuels. And the large challenge here really is the end user not having the type of financing to afford the high upfront costs of higher level solar interventions like solar mini grids. The second is that, and this is really what the work that the IAC team did in the course of our year at SEAL is trying to reframe the rural household as a beneficiary of charity to a rural household as an economic agent with preferences that can discern whether or not they want to purchase a service and really framing energy access as a service that a rural household would pay for and that there are requirements that any solar company, solar designer has to respond to. And then the last two points were really about how these projects are implemented. And having services and technicians that can reach the individual household level we saw was a constant obstacle to the success of these projects. And for other companies and organizations working in the sector, it's really having a distribution and service network that can reach, uh, can reach the last mile. And finally, that training, especially when you're thinking about it from the product side, is often thought in terms of technical problems that you have to address, but the end user engages with their solar system or their lantern very differently. And so training has to be stylized such that it can be understood and relevant to, um, to these households. Coming to the impact that our project has had, as we mentioned earlier, we measured our work this year on three different parameters, sustained profitability, new business opportunities, and social impact. On sustained profitability, we raised 2.26 cores for CEL as part of our work in Gaia Bihar. We've recruited funding of 70 lakhs as part of our Model Villages initiative. And through the two solar pilot projects that we focused on, which we hope will be a foundation for CEO's future work in the off-grid industry, we've facilitated the access to a market size that's projected to be 150 million by 2018. Coming to new business opportunities, we've expanded CEL's experience in solar mini grids and smart metering technology. We've been able to broker and formalize partnerships with Jivika, part of the Bihar government, as well as members of parliament. We've also been able to design and implement knowledge tools within CEL, and off mention here are village selection, beneficiary selection, and household survey instruments that really have given CEL engineers and given the IAC team the type of data to tailor the interventions that we've designed. We've also worked on an operations and maintenance model that looks at the financing and the sustainability of financing for these community institutions. Five years down the line, they're hit with having to replace these battery systems. So it's essential from the very start of the project that you're able to forecast what type of expenses they'll incur. And finally, we also worked on a system sizing model, which tried to introduce new design techniques and new engineering techniques to CEL's engineering practices. And finally, we've also been able to expand and extend CEL's industry network. This year, we've been able to form partnerships with the Rockefeller Foundation, with the Climate Group, with the Energy Policy Institute at the University of Chicago. We also had the opportunity to present our work on energy access to the bottom of the pyramid users at the US India Tech Summit. Coming to social impact, this year we've reached 600 households and our work has had a positive en environmental impact as well. Uh, we've contributed to the displacement of kerosene and CO2. Uh, we've improved ir water access uh, for irrigation purposes. And we've also been able to extend the number of productive hours that individual rural households have, whether it's uh, for work, for agriculture, or for study. And that brings us to the end of the Energy Enabled Development section. I now turn it over to Alik to talk about the city's initiative. So Mrinalini explained uh, our work as part of uh, the EED initiative, and I'll now briefly take you through our work as part of the city's initiative, some of the challenges we faced, and some of the strategies we evolved to take care of those challenges. Now, the overarching initiative, the overarching objective here was to gain CEL a uh, tangible foothold in the urban space, right, in the urban sustainability and renewable energy space. And we, as we went about doing this, and the second thing that we worked on was to design and test and get feedback on a tangible product offering that could position CEL in an ecosystem for smart city development in India. Um, and so uh, under the aegis of IIC, CEL uh, 
signed an MOU with the Delhi Mumbai Industrial Corridor Development Corporation. And the task we were given was to look at one of the cities, that is IIT Greater Noida, and figure out what sustainable technologies can be put in these cities to make the overall sustainability of this corridor, right, taking learnings from the city better. And we analyzed costs and benefits, and we recommended interventions, which we'll, which we'll talk about uh, in, uh, later. So, you know, here we were. We had, we had CEL, which had a lot of expertise in renewable energy, uh, but not in the broader context of sustainability. There were only uh, a few of us working on this as part of uh, the CEL team, and we had to uh, do this task of figuring out interventions. For, it, it, was a, it was a big task. In the, uh, and, and so we, uh, you know, we thought, what is the best way in our time frame to do something that can be carried forward and can bring about impact in the future. And so we did a lot of secondary research. We collated the universe of interventions and best-in-class practices that's been done across the world, right? And then we had expert interviews, and we engaged with, community, uh, with, with experts, both from the private sector as well as sectoral experts. We, uh, uh, see, we coordinated a conference that was co-hosted by CEL and DMICDC, where uh, we got a lot of primary feedback on our interventions. And then looking at the international benchmarks and best practices, we, uh, we, um, we, we figured out, is it worth it, right? Is, is the cost, are the cost of these interventions applicable to the Indian context? Um, are the benefits that you're going to be gaining, both in the environmental and economic sense, do those benefits add up to a value that makes you comfortable with these interventions? And our key insight, while, while shortlisting these interventions, was that we need to follow a minimum cost trajectory. Um, and Let's say you're a sustainable city, uh, uh, let's say you're a city administrator, right, and you want to develop a sustainable city, and you want to, let's say, mitigate 10 million tons of carbon dioxide over the next 10 years, right? We have to figure out the most cost-effective and easiest way for you to get there. And to do that, first, it's important to actually reduce the energy usage, right, uh, first, because that's both cost-effective and easier to implement. Then to figure out ways to add renewable energy into the mix, so that the proportion of renewable energy that's being generated by the, uh, used by the city is more and more renewably powered. Um, and then with, with these additions, you have demand uh, and supply by time of day, you know, at, at different points in the time of day. So you have to figure out, out a way to, to, to smooth this. And uh, we analyzed both market-based measures, such as time of day pricing, as well as uh, physical storage measure, measures, uh, which would work for the city. Um, when we, when we recommended one of our interventions, which was a smart solar streetlight, we, we realized that we could do a lot more and develop a product that CEL could bring to the market, given its past expertise. And, you know, we were inspired by many concepts around the world, uh, and notably by Tesla, right, which focused not on the panacea of green tech, but really on the felt need that it could address and worked out a pro product that could appeal to, to, a, to a specific niche. Um, and we uh, implemented prototypes at CEL, uh, and the, you know the first uh, the first thing we received when we joined as fellows was uh, a do, you know a lot of training on the lean startup methodology by by Sanjay and others about how we could you know quickly uh, make innovation happen in the public sector context right and so uh, we 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 ended up measuring uh, and iterating many times so we developed we had an MVP based approach that let's dev see what we have now. What can be developed that can address needs in, uh, in for both uh, governments as well as citizens, right? While leveraging on the strengths that CEL has and on the uh, way that the uh, that the that the ur urban Indian context is progressing, and so um, we had something that combined three basic developments, right? One is distributed. We are moving towards distributed energy, distributed storage, and distributed computing and networks, right? And we are also, at the same time, look, uh, have, we have issues that are becoming more and more important uh, for governments, such as air pollution and real-time data on a lot of urban, uh, 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 urban you know, movements, as well as people and, and all of that, right? How, how are people moving from place to place? What are the various urban flows? And so we realized that this is an entire ecosystem that can be anchored by CEL. Uh, having all these components together in a particular product that CEL can then develop can actually can actually help uh, you know scale this up so uh, re really fast rather than having only CEL work on it, and so uh, CEL developed the power layer, uh, which is you know 
because as we already discussed, solar is ubiquitous um, and can be used anywhere which, and is distributed, a network layer, and a lot of components in the sensing layer. But the key part of this entire ecosystem, and there's a lot here that we can't go into at this point, is that you want to abstract away each succeeding layer from the previous layer, right? You want to create something that separates the complexity of the internals to the outside implementers and to innovators, right? So if you have, if you're able to expose functions, like for example, let's take the PC. When the PC developed in the 1980s, it was a bunch of complicated components interacting with each other, CPU, RAM, all of that. We don't care about that when we actually make a PowerPoint presentation, right? You don't care about the components and the electrons moving from place to place. All you care about is your presentation. Similarly, if you're a computer programmer, you care about the functionality, right? So similarly, CEL can anchor something in the in, in this urban context, this smart tree, where functionality can be exposed to innovators who can take advantage of this being you know, a software challenge for them and work out various innovative applications that can help scale this innovation up very fast. Right? So a couple of applications could be, let's say you, know, you had an app that could not tell you just the shortest point between two points in the city, but the least polluted, the least polluted point. Or you could have CCTV cameras that could tell you uh, which you know, which of the 3,000 or 10,000 cameras in the city are more likely to see disturbance and, and prioritize those feeds. We don't need to work on, on the problem ourselves. Other people can work on it if you abstract away some of the difficulties that we faced and in designing and that CEL faced in designing the uh, early layers of this. Now, <clears throat> as Mrinalini mentioned before, we were measuring ourselves on three key metri metrics. And so as part of um, our work, this product is very aligned with a lot of central government initiatives and a lot of priorities of the government, such as Digital India, uh, you know, uh, industrial corridors, as well as the urban renovation program, right? And CEL can help develop this ecosystem and can be a key, can utilize these funds, right, very effectively for the benefit of the nation by channeling them into a product that can combine the functionality for smart city and use elements of renewable energy, which addresses a, fe a felt need, uh, you know, uh, which is that it's it is ubiquitous. Um, and while exploring this, we've, uh, we looked at various business opportunities that CL can take up now. On the uh, invitation of the Honorable Administrator of Daman and Diu, we visited Diu, and we conducted a market analysis there. Uh, they want to turn their beaches into smart beaches. So this product can have a lot of applications in, you know, in a lot of different areas. Um, we're in talks with IIT Delhi uh, right now, uh, and uh, the array of things uh, from the University of Chicago, which this was inspired by, to see if we can foment a relationship between an institutional relationship between IIT Delhi, University of Chicago, and a key city player that can help develop this, this ecosystem further beyond our time here. Um, and we've also been in talks with a variety of uh, private sector players as well as you know communication and Wi-Fi experts who can help uh, uh, develop uh, the, part of, the part of this ecosystem that can help cross-subsidize a lot of the urban functions, which is essential because private sector involvement will bring down the overall, overall cost of this product. In terms of social impact, the plan that uh, we submitted to DMICDC has the potential to save um, um, a, lot of, uh, lot, a lot of money because sustainability is not just about mitigating carbon but also saving money. Um, and seven out of the eight interventions that we proposed were accepted by them and are part of the plans currently. And one of our interventions is actually being carried forward now, which is uh, geothermal technology for cooling, uh, for, for having district cooling for the cities. Now, to, to come to some of the insights that we gained from working on this project, the first sort of counterintuitive insight was that in, in the urban context, we tend to think of cities as, as, as machines which have a set of you know, inputs and, and pr pr produce pro productivity as an output in this you know, very small location. But that we found was actually not true. You know, you, cities need to distribute what is over-centralized. And that's why, because that not only gives you resilience, but it allows you to, uh, allows you to have systems that can, uh, you know, that can respond in real time. So a lot of the data that is collected in big cities, people always talk about big data. You don't just need big data, but you need, that, you need to act on that big data fast and, and uh, respond to, 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 uh, to citizens in real time. Now, for CEL, the, um, what we realized was that Focusing on the peri-urban sort of area would be, would be very beneficial for them because of their strengths in the rural development space where they've already implemented over two lakh households have 
gotten uh, you know, access to solar energy, they can use the strength of their implementation in a space which is similar, but can also bring in the functionality of a smart city to spaces that the government had not initially even thought of bringing it to. Because the traditional way to think about this problem is to get in you know, fiber optic cables and all of that, which have a huge expense. But with smart trees, you can actually, uh, I mean, they're self-contained, right? Once you build one smart tree and you have a wireless mesh network, they can all prop, you, can all, you can prop them up and you don't need any infrastructural connections to each smart tree. Um, and, you know, another key insight was that actually public sector processes can move really, really quickly if everything is aligned, you know. At CEL, we got an immense amount of support for our product development uh, after having, uh, you know, after having talked to uh, the management. We worked out a structure in which we could get parts really quickly, uh, work on them, you know, develop those programs, cr quickly upload them to the, to the cloud. And so that happened really quickly. And so if everything, and this, this could be useful for, uh, for the next batch of fellows as well, is that if, if everything is institutionally finalized at, a, at the management layer, things will start moving very, very quickly. Um, and this is just a very brief overview of, um, you know, our here at CL as part of the Energy Enabled Development Initiative. You know, we started by <clears throat> scoping out our projects. Then we had a couple, two more initiatives come up that Mrinalini talked about. And now we're focusing on the off-grid business plan. And there was, there was a lot of activity that was happening concurrently, and I'll talk, to, talk about some of the challenges that arose as a result of that. Um, and as part of the city's initiative, same thing. We started in December, um, had to scope out, work, first worked on the knowledge partnership with DMICDC, then on the product creation, and then now we're working on uh, basically setting this ecosystem up to succeed, right, uh, beyond our time here. So CEL can provide the basis of this product, but it can. But we are already in talks with IIT Delhi and uh, University of Chicago, uh, the Array of Things uh, team at University of Chicago, which is uh, which 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 are in preliminary talks to make IIT Delhi a smart campus and then move from there to a city and so on, so that R and D can happen quickly. Now, just to speak to you briefly about the challenges we faced as a team and some of the solutions that we evolved uh, as a result of those challenges. Now, first thing was that. In, as soon as we got into this uh, project, right, th we, it was, uh, we, we, there was no direction for us. We had to figure out our own direction. So um, we, there, there, was a, there, there were a lot of things that CL was already doing uh, which we could take up or we could change it. And first we had a lot of meetings about it amongst ourselves. We started, we started to think about what could be best, uh, what would be, you know, what we could do as a, a, a team of fellows in a year. And then we realized that, you know, we, would, would need to reach out to experts uh, uh, for, for this and figure out. So the first column there is like the problems we faced, and then you have you know, what we tried to do to address those challenges, and then finally what we learned, right? So what we learned here was that you know, it was important, and, and, and Dr. Shingo spoke to some of this, to focus on the core strengths of a company. So in IRD, for example, uh, the core strength of, the, of, of CEL was not services, but uh, product, but offering a product, right? And so we changed it to EED later. So all of this took some time, and it was, it, it, you know, it was also a time where there was a lot of activity happening, but all internal focused. Um, now, second uh, challenge that was actually common to both uh, initiatives was the lack of standards or best practices uh, relevant to India for both, uh, you know, for design, for many of the things we did, like mini grids, um, or for outreach, like for community partners or for figuring out how to reach uh, citizens in a city. Now, we, the way we, we, we uh, tried to address that was that we tried to propel discussions on, around this concept. We even floated a concept for a city standard uh, that would, for a, for a sustainable city standard for India, that we think should be taken up, but we realized that it needs strong political buy-in because all cities in India have to be sort of, all new cities have to sort of buy in and align themselves to the idea that there are certain sustainability best practices that have to be followed in order for you to make a truly sustainable city. Um, another key challenge was that we had a lack of specialized knowledge. We were multidisciplinary, and we, you know, we were not urban planners from, our, from the city's side at all, and there were no engineers in the rural development uh, uh, team, but we had to figure out how to get that information from a lot of industry experts and build our personal knowledge and, and lean on uh, CEL's expertise in this area as well. Um, working with the government was also a challenge that was completely new. It has a set of complex you know, internal processes and communication channels, which as I mentioned before, if you set up correctly, 
you can achieve a lot, but you need to recognize and have, uh, you have to set it up um, correctly. And what you have to realize that in, in the government, the, the good thing is that there are so many people with so much experience at, that it's very easy for them to tell you what ideas look good on paper and what ideas will actually succeed. And so as an IAC team, it's important to focus on the ones that can happen within your time frame and not the ones that you know, might take years or might need many more teams for you to, for you to, have, uh, to make an impact. And uh, some of the other teams also spoke to this, that uh, you know, stakeholder management and communication is, is, was very difficult for, for us because initially it was because there's so many stakeholders here. There's ISC, CEL, there are other partner organizations. And you know, the government works in its own way, and you have to recognize how to effectively use that structure. And you know, just before quickly wrapping up, some insights for future fellows are that while all of this stuff is happening, you know, and all this scoping and direction is being figured out, it's important to keep up your morale because the external environment will keep on changing, but you'll have to stick together as a team to, if you want to make any impact after a year, right? Um, and also to not make half preconceived no, no, uh, you know, notions about what organizations or individuals can or cannot do. Um, and you know, a couple of things about uh, prioritizing your time, which is key for ISC, as well as having, a, having some processes in place um, where you can talk, to some, talk about some of these issues internally. Um, thank you for uh, listening, to, listening to us, and uh, we'd be happy to field any questions you might have.